Ah, uh, March Madness, the season for underdogs to imprint their name at one of collegiate sports' most prestigious tournaments. Every year, billions of dollars are put into this industry to help fund things like tournament costs, commercials, and rewards for people who can pick a perfect bracket. With the NCAA basketball tournament in full swing, I thought it would only be fitting to focus today on how quote-unquote March Madness has turned into one of the biggest events in sports every year. Before we hop into the video guys, make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. The year is 1939. World War II has just begun, the first Thin Mint cookies have been baked by Girl Scouts, and a gallon of gas only costs 10 cents. What? This is one of, if not the most important years ever in college basketball. On March 27, 1939, when Oregon played Ohio State in what is known as the inaugural NCAA basketball tournament. At this point, Oregon and Ohio State weren't even known as the Ducks and Buckeyes yet, as the Oregon Duck wasn't spotted until 1940, and the Ohio State Buckeye wasn't seen until about 1965. Oregon would ultimately win 46-33. Now, this isn't the March Madness we all know and love today, because a few things were different. First, there were only eight teams that competed in the tournament, unlike the current 64 and first four teams we have now. The tournament was ran by the NABC, also known as the National Association of Basketball Coaches. Also, this tournament wasn't even the biggest for college basketball, as the NIT was known as the main tournament for collegiate basketball as it had been founded a year before. Another thing was there was no such thing as March Madness at the time, but it was coming soon. Very soon. Let's rewind a little. In 1908, a boys high school basketball tournament was made by the IHSA, also known as the Illinois High School Association, that was named March Madness. A few teams from the Kentucky area, known as the Sweet 16, sold out arenas to the IHSA championship games. Fast forward back to 1938, and over 900 teams were participating in the IHSA March Madness tournament. This was especially comforting, as while there was a world war going on, watching local basketball brought the community together, as they didn't have to worry about anything except the team they were rooting for. It wasn't until one year later when a former high school basketball coach and secretary of the IHSA named Henry V. Porter wrote an essay where he said, quote, a little March Madness may complement and contribute to sanity and help keep society on an even keel. It was then Porter coined the term as it began to slowly spread across the nation. Fast forward about 38 years. It's 1977. The king of rock, Elvis Presley, has died. Apple, just a year ago, was founded and the first Apple computers have gone on sale and the average house is just a little over 13,500 bucks. In March 1977, at a Staten Island bar by the name of Jody's Club Forest, a group of 88 people have paid $10 each and filled out NCAA tournament brackets in a winner takes all for who can predict the best bracket. It's led by the owner, Jody Haggerty. This was the start of what we now call bracketology. It just wasn't called that then. Let's go back to the term March Madness. In the late 1980s, longtime legendary announcer Britt Musburger has seen some of the high school March Madness tournament games in Illinois. While announcing for CBS, Musburger was moving some teams around in the bracket and while doing that said, quote, It's madness. It's March Madness. The term once again stuck and since it was gaining major national attention, the IHSA trademarked the term in 1989, which they still own today. It wasn't until 1996 the NCAA acquired a license to use the term March Madness. From then on, the term grew bigger and bigger by the year to the point it's at now where in almost every NCAA tournament advertisement, somewhere on there you will see the term March Madness. Back to brackets. Bracketology was still making its way to become more popular among college basketball fans. It wasn't until an editor and owner of the Blue Ribbon College Basketball Yearbook would revolutionize the way people predicted brackets. Joe Lenardi. In an 80-page postseason supplement released the nights the brackets were released, Lenardi predicted the selection committee's bracket. On February 25, 1996, the Philadelphia Inquirer referred to Lenardi as a bracketologist. This was the first time the term was used. Although Lenardi recalls himself never using the term before the article, the Inquirer writer Mike Jensen gives the credit to Lenardi for putting it in his article. Lenardi would then start Bracketology.net, and ESPN began running his predictions in exchange for links to his website. By 2002, Lenardi had his own page with ESPN where he talked Bracketology. He also teaches a course at St. Joseph's titled Fundamentals of Bracketology. In 2005, the same Staten Island bar from 1977 
Jody's that originally had 88 people now had the most people it ever had as 150,000 people had entered in the bracket contest. The amount of people that entered caused the prize money to exceed over $1.5 million. The prize money was so much that it brought major media attention to the event and also gave people the idea to start their own brackets during tournament time. After a winner claimed the cash he had won on his taxes, it made the IRS very suspicious and led them to launch an investigation on the bracket tournament and its previous winners. This eventually led to Jody pleading guilty to tax evasion and receiving two years probation. The bracket challenge was then canceled the next year by the bar, but it had already left a huge imprint internationally on betting and sports, and especially college basketball. Even though it almost sent a man to jail, the NCAA tournament also took over the NIT as the main college basketball tournament and about the 1960s, as the better teams began playing in the NCAA tournament than the NIT. From the Illinois High School Basketball Tournament to the Jody's Club Forest Bracket Challenge, all this culminated into college basketball tournament time now. Whether you're biting your nails or caring less about it during tournament time, it will have at least a little impact in your life some way. Because as Henry Porter said it best, who doesn't love Little March Madness? do it and then we're just going to do it today to keep calm and to just put into play everything that coaches taught them to do.